everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Getting troops onto land occupied by the enemy is a problem that has plagued military planners for centuries. Forces dug into positions on a beach or across a river have always had the upper hand. One force that has undertaken to change that is the United States Marine Corps, which has modern amphibious vehicles and tactics. After the disastrous amphibious landings at Gallipoli during World War I, militaries worldwide realized that amphibious operations required speed and protection for their troops. During World War II, these lessons were taken into consideration. Landing vehicle tract was developed, including the LVT-2 Water Buffalo and the LVT-4. Amphibious landings were still difficult to undertake and required good planning and coordination, as well as excellent command and control across a wide front. Even with the development of LVTs and similar vehicles, much of the initiative still relied upon the grit and determination of the troops on the beach to create a beachhead. Throughout the decades since World War II and Korea, the U.S. Marine Corps has further developed its skills and equipment and advanced a dedicated amphibious vehicle called the Assault Amphibious Vehicle. Currently designated the AAVP-7A1, this design was a breakthrough with its ability to transport Marines from amphibious assault ships right onto the beach. With a 50 caliber heavy machine gun and a Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher, it offers an amphibious capability with devastating firepower. Once the enemy has been suppressed, up to 21 Marines can exit the AAV and go onto the beach to mop up enemy forces. For the Marines to reach the beach, they require a staging area, which happens on amphibious assault ships. Vessels such as the Landing Helicopter Assault or the new San Antonio-class Landing Platform Dock have well decks from which amphibious vehicles like the AAV are launched. The well deck is situated at the aft part of the ship and is an area that opens to the ocean. It can be partially flooded to support various types of vehicles or craft splashes and recoveries. For an amphibious assault operation, the AAVs are parked in the well deck in the order in which they will depart. At the appropriate time, the order is given, and the AAVs drive out of the well deck at speed to splash into the ocean.
During this evolution, the operation is coordinated by radio. AAVs leave the amphibious assault ship in a trailing row of vehicles. At the appropriate time on command, the vehicles turn towards their objective and are automatically formed in an extended line. From there, the AAVs assault the shore Once the AAVs are on the beach, they are used as assault vehicles to neutralize pockets of enemy resistance, usually with air cover. The AAV can be outfitted with additional armor called oblique armor for added protection. AAVs must be able to support Marines as they push further inland to take more objectives. For that reason, they undergo sustainment training, where Marines are taught how to live and fight from the AAV. Training includes command and control, driving and maneuvering, and various other critical skills such as troop deployment and gunnery. Gunnery training is not just about accurately using the AAV weapons, but also about using them under control and becoming used to the process of loading, unloading, and handling spent cartridges strewn across the floor of the turret. Got it. Got it. Marines also learn how to resupply ammunition during an operation and deliver fire as a unit for maximum effect. AAVs are used to approach targets and suppress them with fire. While the enemy is being suppressed, the Marines exit the AAV from its wide rear door, protecting them from initial fire. Marines deploy to the left and right if they are assaulting forward. Otherwise, they deploy directly toward the rear to outflank the enemy from a solid base. Close drop-offs are closely coordinated by squad leaders and platoon commanders, directed by the company commander. Drop-off drills are constantly practiced, ensuring that they offer the Marines the best probability of operational success. This is important because uh, we don't get a lot of opportunities to work with tracks or CAT, especially tracks. I've worked with them very little before this workup. So being able to utilize them in like defenses and blocking positions is uh, helped us a lot, especially when movements. So considering our attack on the mountain town, being able to utilize them for close drop-off uh, opportunities and support by fires was extremely helpful. While advancing inland, the Marines may encounter various obstacles. Of these, minefields are a major concern and need to be dealt with. If left unattended, a minefield can cause major problems for an advancing unit. During mine clearing exercises, Marines use an AAV equipped with a mine clearing line charge to breach minefields and provide safe passage for their combatants. 
the MIC-LIC is propelled across the minefield with a rocket and detonated. The overpressure detonates mines and creates a mine-free passage. Other obstacles to the advance include rivers, which are less of a problem for the Marines. During river crossing operations, U.S. Marines collect hydrographic data to guarantee the 26-ton AAV can maneuver in river currents without grounding. Unlike beach landings, securing flanks for enfilade protection is essential. Command and control necessitate precise synchronization for crossing timelines, such as decoy launches and AAV maneuvers. Tactical employment of smoke and suppressive fire conceals and protects AAVs, which vary their water and ground speeds to match river currents, diverting from the plain, speedy approach of beach landings. These operations require specific reconnaissance, security, C2, and engineering procedures. During amphibious and follow-up operations, the AAVs and their Marines operate as part of the Marine Air Ground Task Force. Since the task force will have various objectives, the Marines must be adaptable to carrying out different types of missions. Because of the complicated nature of large-scale operations, a chain of command is used to ease the command load, but still leaves lower-level commanders with a lot of space for command initiative. But even with these systems in place, regular training and utilizing the AAV and the command and control structure is critical. Platoon and squad leaders are more often able to address their troops directly. Keeping AAVs in the fight is a critical part of operational readiness. AAV maintenance includes frequent engine, transmission, and water jet propulsion inspections as well as the lubrication of the vehicle's 16.25-inch ground clearance suspension. The hull's integrity is frequently inspected for water tightness to prevent breaches during amphibious operations. When required, the U.S. Marine Corps can repair their AAVs at difficult locations, such as areas close to the front lines. AAVs are, however, reaching the end of their service life, and their level of armor protection has remained an issue. For that reason, the U.S. Marine Corps is transitioning from the AAV to the amphibious combat vehicle. Based on the LAV-25 and the U.S. Army Striker, the ACV has a lower silhouette is better armed, and is less complicated than the tracked AAV. Furthermore, the ACV was designed to have better survivability in combat scenarios. Once the ACV engages in ground missions, it's better suited for the role than the AAV. The difference with the return to water from the past to now is we have a safer approach with more implementations of our supporting assets using the R7s with a boom crane and our LVSR with their uh, capabilities so that if we come into a dangerous area in the surf zone and experience any faults, they have that asset to pull us out. ACVs are not only better armed with an M2 Browning with a remote controlled weapon station, but their armor is also much better. Not only does the low silhouette provide a smaller target, but the ACV is also much more maneuverable. 
It's outfitted with a bow plane, which is used to help the vehicle maintain a nose-up attitude while it's moving through the water. ACVs are controlled on the beach by Marines known as Beachmasters as they prepare to return to their vessel. Thanks to their wheels, ACVs are also more buoyant and there is less chance that the rubber wheels can damage the well deck door. Another advantage is that once the ACV is in the well deck, it takes up less space. In stark contrast to early amphibious operations, the U.S. Marine Corps has developed the force, tactics, and equipment to make these types of operations easier. Vehicles such as the ACV promise to make the Corps a force capable of engaging any opponent effectively with quality air power as support. Once the beach has been taken, the ACV can take the Marines even further inland than they were ever capable of. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.